I want to say good afternoon to those of you who are joining us locally and for Safe to Serve International joining us online as well as our first time viewers. At this time before we begin this all important service, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer at this time. Father in heaven, we're thankful for your prayers on our behalf in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. We're thankful that you are our great physician. And we're thankful that today you're here to bless us physically, mentally, and spiritually. Bless us now, we pray. We thank you for what you will do is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Well, hello and welcome, one and welcome all. We are so excited to welcome you out here and we're thankful that you have chosen to spend a part of your day with us here at Save to Serve for another health and wellness seminar. Well, we know that your time is very valuable to you and so we can guarantee you 100% that we are not here to waste your time, okay? So the next few minutes that you spend here will be time well spent. I have a few questions for our guests. The first question I have, by a show of hands, how many of you have attended one of our health seminars before? All right. Can I see the hands of those who this is their first health and wellness seminar that they've attended? All right. Well, I'm so happy that you've accepted Amen. our invitation and you've traveled from far, some of you. Uh, and some of you are here locally, we're thankful that each and every one of you have come out today. All right, so the next question, for those of you who have attended previous health seminars, how many of you learned simple, natural remedies to address, prevent, and cure sickness and diseases? Okay, how many of you have been implementing what you have learned? All right, that's good, excellent. Well, you are in store to learn even more today. So we are going to learn how we can knock down, knock out and defeat deadly diseases using God's methods of healing, using herbs and the elements that God provided for us in nature. So at this time, Andrew will introduce our guest speaker. It's a privilege to introduce our guest speaker at this time, whom I have known for at least 10 years, at least 10 years. He's married to Donna Henry for 19 years and his wife is here as well. Wave your hand, Donna, everyone can see you sitting in the front to my right. They have two children, Christopher and Chantel. He served in the US Marines for nine years. He graduated Blackstone School of Law in 1995 graduated Trinity College of Natural Health as a naturopathic doctor. He served as first elder of Maranatha Estia Church in Apopka, Florida for 11 years. He practiced natural medicine in Orlando, Florida for 12 years. He is the director of phase three ministries and uh, he also is uh, the overseer of that ministry. And today, I am elated to present to you Dr. Keith Henry. I know he loves the Lord, and he has committed and dedicated his life, his family, to serving others and not to be served. Stay tuned. Doc. Your time. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, you can do better than that. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having me, and uh, thank you all who have come out. And uh, it is always good to be in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. Uh, when people ask me how I'm doing, and so, you know, every day above the ground is a good day. Not, not everything that happens in the day is necessarily good, but every day above the ground is a good day. Amen? Um, 
Now, as you can see, thank you. As you can see, it is deadly diseases, right? Versus what? And I've been told that you all are a pretty astute group, those of you who have, that have attended these uh, seminars before. And so I have to be on my A game, right? Now, I'd like to refer you to a scripture real quick. I'm talking about Jesus. It says, and Jesus went, this is Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. The point made is that there's nothing that God can't heal. There's nothing that God can't heal. Now, as you heard, I have been a naturopath for a while, and I've had opportunity and occasion to see many different diseases and ailments. Um, and you, when you see the ability of natural remedies to cure almost anything, and I might not, maybe I shouldn't use that word because we want to get knocked, but to heal anything, uh, it, is, it is amazing. Now, as you can see, terrible diseases, natural remedies, powerful results. Now, sometimes when you're thinking, okay, where should I start? Where should I start? There's so many different areas to start. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to take some of the things that people, that people complain about, or some of the issues that they run into most often, uh, and within, also within the context of the time that we have. And just before we go forward, I'll spend a time presenting a theor the theory here, and then we'll spend time with some hands-on here, and then we'll have a question and answer uh, seg segment. So, a chief medical book, of course, is what? The Bible. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. An herb for the service of man. Now, Let's start off with a 79 cent flu remedy or cold. A 79 cent flu or cold remedy. Could you, if you could just get out of a cold or a flu for 79 cent, that, that's pretty good, right? Now, this may sound strange to you. Some of you may have heard of it. I'm sure some of you have. But it is hydrogen peroxide. Now, probably some of these remedies that we cover, you may have heard of some of them, but sometimes it depends on how you use them. Some things people use and they say, well, it didn't work. Sometimes we don't use it correctly, or sometimes we don't use it enough, or we don't use it long enough. So, and then sometimes some things work for 99% of the people, and then for, for whatever reason, for one, this one person, it doesn't work, or 1%, it doesn't work. And so then you have to find something else have to ask why. So, but how are we going to use hydrogen peroxide for a cold? You put it in your ears. Yeah, you put it in your ears. And when we do the, um, the hands-on, if we have a brave volunteer, I put a little bit in your ears. Has a couple of um, testimonies. Anne from Chicago writes, HTO, H2O, or which is hydrogen peroxide, in ear for colds, I get sick almost every month, usually with a bad cold during or right after my period. I tried HTO in my ears, H2O2 in my ears, right when I was getting that familiar tingle in the back of my throat and tired feeling I always get before a cold. I use about half a capful of 3% hydrogen peroxide, poured into my ears, 
one at a time, lying on my side and let it sit and fizz for about 10 minutes each before dumping it out. The itchy feeling started disappearing right away, and the next day I wasn't sick as I was sure I would be. I normally get sick for a good week or two when I do, so I was really glad it worked. Now, what happens is, as you put it in your ear, it's going to fuzz. If you ever put it on a cut, have you ever put it on a cut and you notice the way it fizzes up? Same things in your ears, especially when you have a cold or, or when it's coming on. Especially when the cold is coming on. So when you put it in your ear, it's going to really, really fuzz, fizz. And if, and if there's infection there, which normally when you have a cold, though the virus tends to multiply very quickly in the, in the dark, cold areas, the nose and the inner ear. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to expose that virus to that oxygen, where it, can't, it cannot live and exposed to pure oxygen. So basically, when you put it in, it's going to fizz and it's going to become really, really, it's going to become warm. The more active the infection is, the warmer it's going to become. In fact, it feels hot sometimes. You put it in there and it'll fizz and it'll fizz and sometimes it'll bubble up out of the ear. And you just let it fizz and then you do it a few times until it stops fizzing and then you do the other ear. Normally you, you uh, lean over a, over a sink, you're over your sink in your bathroom while you let it go. So it'll go and it'll fizz and it'll fizz and you do both ears and you do them repeatedly until all of the fizzing stops. And 90, especially if you catch it early, pretty much 99% of the time, it's going to eradicate or prevent the cold or flu from developing. Teresa from Auburn, Indiana, said the same thing. Hydrogen peroxide kept me from getting the cold flu I felt coming on. The first time I tried using hydrogen peroxide in both of my ears was when I was visiting my sister in Illinois about five years ago. I had just arrived from the five-hour drive and could feel that I was getting a cold or flu. My sister suggested placing a few six to seven drops of hydrogen peroxide in my ear, letting it fizz, then let it drain and repeat the process in the other ear. I went to bed that evening after using the hydrogen peroxide and woke up feeling great. I never did get that cold. I've repeated this process each time. I felt as though I was coming down with the cold or flu. It has worked 90% of the time. The key is to catch it early. The longer you wait to use the hydrogen peroxide, once you have the first symptoms, the less likely it will work. And in many cases, it'll still work. It would just not work as well. So, 79 cent bottle of hydrogen peroxide. Now, just in case it catches you before you're able to check it. Here you see on the screen a remedy. Now, this is one of the most powerful cold and flu remedies that you're going to get. Uh, it was developed uh, by myself during uh, something that happened recently that we all know about, right? And a lot of people were, were in dire straits. And so by God's grace, uh, he helped me to develop this, and no one that used it, everyone that used it is still with us. Amen? So again, use it for that, but also for, for colds and flus, because it works. It works, uh, it really does. And uh, so again, you'll be able to, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to get copies of this. Uh, they can give copies if they, uh, if they like. Uh, I'll leave the, the presentation. And so you can get the notes. I'm sure some of you may be taking pictures with your phone, but here's what I, I would highly recommend, that you get everything that's on there and have it in hand. Because once you get hit with, you know, a flu or cold, et cetera, uh, and you have to wait to get it and you have to order it, it's, it's just have it on hand and jump on it right away. And if you jump on it right away, 
We've even seen people in their late 80s with multiple health issues recover. Something wor much worse than a cold, if you know what I mean. And so, again, um, it works well. And uh, one of the things that you see at the bottom, you'll see that uh, you can also use a nebulizer, which we'll look at there in a minute. That alone, alone will do similar to what the peroxide will do in the ears, but you just nebulize the peroxide in the nebulizer or you nebulize uh, colloidal silver. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So again, the key is the first sign, the first sign. Uh, now again, uh, I don't want it to, 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 to sound like that, that remedies just work for everything. The ideal is not to get sick in the first place if you can help it, right? So an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It really is. So again, if we you know, eat healthy, get sunshine, exercise, water, air, rest, diet, self-control, temperance, a scientific application of those, a natural application of those will have a scientific uh, 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 production in the body to where we will be healthy and well. They really will. So again, that's your foundation. That's your foundation. Sunshine, trust in the creator, exercise, water, air, rest, diet, and self-control or temperance. That's your building block. Other things are supplements. They supplement those laws. Now, uh, this is on Fox News Atlanta a, a while back. And interestingly enough, this lady woke up in the emergency room with her breasts removed as a result of a spider bite. Now, she was bitten by a brown recluse spider. Uh, she didn't realize it. And that's what happens sometimes with a brown recluse spider bite. Now, the reason I put that in is because in Georgia, the brown recluse spider is not that frequent except up here in this area. Up in uh, north, the north part of Georgia and, and this part of Atlanta uh, and the northern part, et cetera. And so uh, as you can see, she, she was bitten by a brown recluse spider. She didn't, realize, she didn't realize it for about a week when she noticed lumps on her breast. After a few days, she began to vomit, experience nausea, pain, and a very foul odor, so bad that it became unbearable. She eventually fell into a coma and woke up in the hospital with her left breast gone. Gangrene had set in, and both the tissue and the muscle had to be removed. Are you familiar with a brown recluse spider? That's what it looks like. Now, I just moved up this way from Florida, so they're quite, they were quite you know, frequent down there. Uh, and so what you want to keep on hand, which I'm sure many of you have heard of, is activated charcoal. That's, I call activated charcoal black gold. Dr. Agatha Thrash pointed out that the treatment of choice for a brown recluse spider bite is charcoal. In fact, there is no other recognized treatment except wide surgical excision. There is no known antidote. And she's speaking, medically speaking. Speaking of charcoal, Dr. Daniel Maya, MD, NMD, says it's the only thing to do for a brown recluse spider bite. Conventional med medical treatment consists of giving both an antibiotic, prednisone, both of which are basically worthless in preventing the inevitable, inevitable tissue damage that will follow. But placing a charcoal poultice over the bite, bite site will pull the toxins out of the system, usually in as little as one hour. I have also used it successfully in black, black widow spider bites, which are not as serious as a brown recluse uh, bite, but very painful. You can see on the pictures, these are some of these are some of the things that can result from, if you see the pictures, from a brown recluse spider bite as the venom goes through. It will eat all the way to the bone. Now, th imagine such a remedy that the creator has given us, something as simple as charcoal, activated charcoal, that can render that bite ineffective. 
keep it on hand. It's, it would be a good idea actually to have a natural uh, medical kit. Having activated charcoal, some of you might have it already, I don't know. Having activated charcoal, uh, uh, cayenne pepper, uh, 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 a few essential oils, and some, some other things. Uh, lobelia, uh, uh, um, uh, and there's a few other ones that you should have in that kit. I'll give you an example, one day I was at church, and uh, <clears throat> um, they, they called me to the back and said, hey, come, come, you know, there's someone having problem breathing. And so I went to the back and uh, a gentleman was in the sick room and he was, he was heaving for air. He couldn't breathe. So at the time I, I had a cayenne pepper in one, uh, in one pocket and I had lobelia extract in the other pocket. So I ran and I, and I took the, I asked someone could they give me a, a teaspoon, a plastic teaspoon. So I took uh, the, the extract of lobelia gave him a teaspoon of that lobelia, waited for 20 minutes. I said, how's your breathing? He says, my breathing is back about 50%. I gave him another teaspoon of that lobelia extract. I said, how's your breathing? And he, that by this time, he had tears coming down in his eyes because now he, was, he felt that he could praise God because he was able to praise God because he couldn't breathe. Just that quick, in 20 minutes, uh, they, was about, they were about to call the, uh, 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 the ambulance, yes and rush him off to the hospital. Now, of course, you have to find out what's the underlying cause. Why was he having a problem breathing? But you understand uh, we see another way of God's remedies being able to work and potentially save a life. Dr. Thrash asks, the brown recluse spider produces a bite that gives little or no pain at first. In 24 hours, a purplish red zone develops around the bite and extensive tissue death occurs. It may produce a very deep and angry ulceration extending down to the bone, which lasts for weeks or months. We have had three brown recluse spider bites successfully treated with charcoal, which produced no ulcerations and only the faintest purple discoloration after one week. The sooner treatment is begun, the better. The spider is brown and has a fiddle-shaped mark on the bite back. I will skip over this one, but this is basically, I'll, I'll, I'm going to skip over it. I'll just give you a synopsis. Who's familiar with E. coli? Who's ever had E. coli? Your daughter. One of the best things to use for it is activated charcoal. Now, there's a specific way that you will need to use it, as, as pointed out here. I just want to go to that. Uh, in this, in, this, in, this, in this scenario here, uh, this young, this, this Columbus executive, he was having problems. He had gone down to Mexico and he'd gotten into, picked up E. coli, and he was having, uh, I think it was four, he had, I think maybe f two to three times an hour on the first day he was having to go. Imagine how, how discomforting that would be, two or three times an hour. And so finally, a, late, a week later, he went, he went home, he consulted his own doctor because the condition had settled down to three to five diarrheal stools a day with continuing discomfort. He got a change of medication, but no change of symptoms. After 12 days of the disease and eight different medicines, he called us, desperately seeking suggestions for a natural remedy. We began a routine of one tablespoon of charcoal and a glass of water, followed by a full glass of water every time he had a loose stool. That's the remedy right there. Now, it can be, this can be, it can be very debilitating. Be very, very debilitating. Anyone here has heart issues? High blood pressure? No? High blood pressure? Any other circulatory issues? Congestive heart failure? I see some hands. One of your best friends is the herb hawthorn berry. But I would recommend that you combine it with cayenne pepper when using it. Hawthorn berry contains compounds that support the heart and the circulatory system. It is used regularly to protect against the beginning stages of heart disease. It's also excellent to help speed recovery from a heart attack. It contains several nutrients, including vitamin A, 
vitamin C, sodium, selenium, potassium, chromium, niacin, and 19 other nutrients. Think about that. So look at all those things that the Creator has put in hawthorn berry. Who knew? Vitamin A, vitamin C, sodium, selenium, potassium, chromium, niacin. So a lot of people, when they think of herbology, you know, they, they don't realize how scientific it is. You know, most people have these images, you know, of a guy somewhere in the back room, like mixing potions and, and smoke coming up. That's, that's not, you know, when you really look at her herbal medicine is really scientific. Uh, and so here you have a lot of people who have circulatory issues. It's considered the number one cause of death in the country. Even Michigan, University of Michigan, uh, have done studies and they found that the antioxidant Hawthorne appears to reduce symptoms and improve exercise capacity by increasing blood flow to the heart and the strength of the heart contractions and reducing resistance to blood flow in the extremity. So they basically says clinical trials have shown that standardized extracts made from leaves and flowers of Hawthorne are effective in helping people with early stage congestive heart failure. We'll, we'll, we'll do our question and answers later. We'll do question and answers later. Now, what is congestive heart failure? A weakened heart condition that causes fluid buildup in the feet, arms, lungs, and other organs. Symptoms include shortness of breath, fatigue, arrhythmias, and edema. Treatments include medications, heart surgery, or heart transplantation. Think about that. Think about if, you, if, 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 if using God's remedies such as Hawthorne Berry can eradicate congestive heart failure and keep you from having to go through some of those other radical stages of heart surgery. Ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? Who's, who's heard of Hawthorne Berry? Most of you. Have any of you used it? No. Oh, someone used it this morning. <laughs> okay. Like I said before, a good idea is to, is to combine it with, with cayenne pepper. The reason being is cayenne pepper is going to dilate your vessels, and it's going to help whatever herb you combine with it to push through your arteries quicker and more effectively. So it's a good idea to combine, and sometimes also to, combi to combine ginger with it as well. But normally, I like to combine char uh, uh, cayenne for that reason. Uh, of course, I'm sure you've heard the ability of cayenne, for instance, to stop a heart attack, right? And how long does it take? 60 seconds, right? How hot must it be? Do you know that? At least 90,000 heat units. So at least 90,000 heat units, about 60 seconds. Again, that's just some more information from the University of Michigan, for instance, talking about the ability of uh, Hawthorne Berry. Now, at the bottom there, uh, I have a little a quote there about co uh, COQ10, coenzyme Q10. Are you familiar with that? Again, we used to call it the, uh, um, we used to call Hawthorne Berry the poor man COQ10. But you know, it works the same, but now the prices have come down, so it's not really that significant. But coenzyme Q10 is frequently deficient in those with hypertension. So this is one of the reasons that um, coenzyme Q10 can, can be used as, uh, together also with Hawthorne or separately. Uh, when they take 50 milligrams twice per day, blood pressure goes down significantly. That, that's COQ10. So they found that people who have high blood pressure, if they take 50 milligrams twice per day of COQ10, Blood pressure goes down significantly. 50 to 100 milligrams can be taken three times per day. That's COQ10. I also recommend when you take it, I take it myself every day. Uh, and the first time I began taking it, something strange happened to me. You want to know what that was? The first time I started taking COQ10, something very strange happened. All of a sudden, my wisdom teeth start coming through. Yes. One, and then, so if you look up some research, one, it's one of the best things for gum health. 
Yeah. It's one of the best things for gum health. I should say oral health. I need to pick up a little, this pace a little bit here. Um, now, another, another complaint that we see quite often is people with toothaches. It's one of the most debilitating things that can happen. Anyone agree with that? And are we familiar with oil pulling? No, I hear some yes. Basically, oil pulling is the concept of taking a sesame seed, sesame oil, coconut oil, or mixing them, and basically taking maybe a tablespoon into the mouth and swishing it around for about 20 minutes, and then spitting it out. And it has many benefits. But in this particular case, one of the benefits here, for some people, they find it to be effective when they're having tooth pain or toothache pain. Now, this can also be done with essential oils. Let's say you take some, we have some coconut oil there. And say you take some um, uh, thieves oil, which we have there. And you take and you add maybe three or four or five drops in there and you, and you, and you do the oil pulling by adding also the essential oil. You're going to you get an even better result if you're having toothache pain. But what I've seen to be very effective for toothache pain, my uh, favorite is activated charcoal. Now, some people swear by garlic. A lot of people swear by garlic. But what you, find, what you, what we, what you will find is that if you use the activated charcoal, the way that we're going to show you in our hands-on, you'll find that normally severe pain, I mean severe, severe pain, will stop in a matter of seconds. These oil, are you familiar with these oil? No? These oil contains cloves, cinnamon bark, rosemary, lemon, and eucalyptus. And it is used by many people who swear by it for toothache pain. They would take a gauze, put, put tea tree oil, um, not tea tree oil, these oil on it, put the gauze down in between the gum of the tooth that's giving them problems, and it would numb it immediately. I want to skip those. And I want to talk about, we're going to look at this white willow bark. Are you familiar with white willow bark, correct? No? Yes. White willow bark is nature's aspirin. Aspirin that we know about, bear aspirin, these different aspirins, it was actually made from white willow bark. Now, White willow bark contains calcium, carbohydrates, fiber, magnesium, niacin, phosphorus, potassium, protein, selenium, vitamin A, vitamin C, etc. Again, you have a, a herb that contains all of this. Who knew? White willow bark is used in natural medicine as a pain reliever. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's going to work in a minute when we get down here. Uh, that's going to work like gangbusters. When you combine white willow bark, this will work for almost any pain, no matter how bad. White willow bark with your making dogwood. And we'll tell you exactly how to use it in a minute. White willow bark with your making dogwood. Who, how many of you have heard of Jamaican dogwood? I see one hand. Wow. But yet, I've had occasion to use it in my practice, and I've seen people with pain that was not going away. My wife, for example, she had an extreme, extreme toothache. And even, I mean, it was so bad that even the, what, what do you call it, the, that they give you at the dentist, it wouldn't help. And so normally you would take the, you would take the Jamaican dogwood, and you would take maybe, you know, uh, 30 or 40 drops. But of course, 
uh, whenever I'm having an issue like that, I always pray because God gives you wisdom. This, yes, I've been to school and all of that. That's fine. But there's no schooling above what the creator can give you. And so uh, he just brought it to my mind. Use more of it. So I took an entire dropper full of Jamaican dogwood, an entire dropper full of white willow bark. Pain was gone 16, 18 hours. Gone. I've recommended it in other areas. Something good to also to keep on hand. I've recommended it for other people with severe pain. Again, you want to find out the underlying cause, but you're making dogwood. We'll look at it there. And also, we're talking here white willow bark. Sometimes white willow bark can do it alone, uh, but it's not quite as powerful as you're making dogwood. White willow bark is a proven painkiller, but without the side effects of aspirin. Willow bark's actions are typically slower acting than that of aspirin, but last longer and similar to aspirin. Use of willow bark range for such conditions as fever, minor infections, acute and chronic rheumatoid disorders, headaches, rheumatic disorders, headaches, and pain caused by inflammation. Uh, uh, this is again, this is some research from Penn Hershey, Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. In fact, in the 1800s, salicin was used to develop aspirin, uh, which is from the white willow bark tree is where we get uh, willow bark. So again, aspirin being probably the most widely used medication in the world, owe its origin, like many drugs do, to the natural world. Now, we're going to make this, we're going to make this too. This is the last one, and, and then I want to, I want to talk uh, briefly about something that is very debilitating and many of you could very well be in the early stages and might not even know about it yet. You may have heard of it called adrenal fatigue. It is very debilitating and it strikes women most often. Now, but before we get there, because from getting ready, this will be the last uh, one before we get into the uh, the hands-on. Regrowing flesh. Did you know there was an herb that can regrow flesh? Two 10-year-old boys were playing with machete, was with machetes, matches, <laughs> and gasoline. <laughs> When the gas burst into flame, both boys were severely burned. The surgeon at the hospital said that the hands would either have to be amputated at the wrist and iron claws attached to both arms, or the boys could endure several years of painful skin graft surgeries. After years of such surgery, the boys would have nothing better than mummified claws which could never move like fingers. One set of parents told the surgeon to begin operations. The other set of parents took their child to Dr. Christopher. Dr. Christopher was a popular naturopathic doctor. Uh, he cringed at the badly scarred skin, tendons, muscles, and nerves. He gave the parents a salve made of comfrey, honey, and wheat germ oil. We're going to make it on the hands-on, that salve, so you'll know how to make it for yourself. He told the parents to keep a thick layer of this burn ointment on the area. Within a week, the parents took their son to see the surgeon, who was dumbfounded. The burns had healed from third degree to first degree in one week. What on earth have you been using, he asked. The parents just said, oh, an old-fashioned remedy. Whatever it is, keep on using it. I don't think there's need for surgery now. I can't believe it. But these hands are going to heal without scar tissue. A year after the burn, the first boy remained in the hospital. The parents had invested hundreds of thousands of dollars on the surgery and skin grafting, but the boy ended up with stiff, unbending claws that the boy hid with gloves. The other boy, whose parents had applied the herbal salve, healed completely. The tendons, nerve, muscles, and flesh were all renewed with no scar tissue. Even the fingernails grew back. And uh, uh, some years ago, I had, a, I had a, a German Shepherd, and when he was a puppy, uh, another dog got free and basically assaulted him. 
And um, and so uh, he we he had a couple of puncture wounds in his side, and but we we realized that he kept favoring his area here. He kept licking, and we were, what's wrong with him? And so finally, I I put my hand under the, under his neck to find out what was going on, and my finger sunk in about an inch. There was a wound there that we we didn't know about. So uh, what I did was I used this. Um, this remedy. Mixed it, packed the wound with it, um, and uh, it was, the wound began to fill in almost immediately. Almost immediately. The problem with it, because he smelled the honey, he, keep eat, he kept eating it out. He kept eating it, eating, eating the, uh, <laughs> so, so basically what we did, we had to get uh, one of those, you know, when you take your dog to the vet and the, the thing that they put it. So we got one of those, and, and literally, that inch deep wound, literally, with it less than a week, less than a week, it filled in and was totally healed. So we're going to show you how to, how to make that. And it's, it's inexpensive. It's not expensive uh, to, to have on hand the stuff to make it. Uh, and you can have it in the event. It works for burns, scars, cuts. I've used it on, I had a niece who was, she was young. She was running through the house, hit her face on the edge of a corner. And when she was small, it ripped her face open. She used it. So again, it works. Um, God's remedies work if we avail ourselves of them and how to use them. Uh, now, the last thing is adrenal fatigue. And this is near and dear to my heart in part because I've had um, a few cases. And, and it's one of the reasons I want to bring this to you. It's called adrenal fatigue or adrenal in, 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 insufficiency. And what makes it so dangerous is that it's hard to pick up. It will not show up in a blood test until it's pretty much too late. Uh, I'm going to tell you a, a brief story. Uh, a few years back, my wife and I, uh, my daughter, we were going up to, we was coming up here to Georgia to visit my, my, my mother. And it was on a Christmas Eve. And as we were driving up, uh, my wife, she had, she had developed a small little cough earlier. But as we were going, about halfway there, she said, she says, pull over. I don't feel good. I said, I said what's wrong? She says, pull over. I don't feel good. I said, what's happening? And so before I could pull over, and we were on, we were on I-75, before I could pull over, her eyes rolled up in her head, and she passed out. So I got out, and, and so I, me and my daughter got out. So I was, I was, I was pulling her. I was, about to, I was taking her seatbelt off to start CPR. I was going to pull her out and put her on the side of the road to start CPR, but she came too. And uh, so... And I was saying, Lord, I hope, you know, that she doesn't die here on me, on this, on this highway out here. And so um, when we got to my mother's house, her legs were ice cold from her knees down. Ice cold. To make a long story short, on the way back home, she passed out again. But it was a lot. It wasn't, it wasn't, she wasn't out as long. It wasn't as pronounced. To make a long story short, symptoms kept going on, trying to figure out what was happening. Some years earlier, I had run a, a, a saliva test where I saw there's some early signs of adrenal fatigue. But if you don't deal with it right away, it won't get better. It'll only get worse. It'll never get better on its own. So as she kept, as, as time went on, uh, we took her to the hospital to see, make sure nothing else was wrong. They said her heart was healthy as a horse. And so spent $20,000 in tests. So I finally ordered a... Uh, a saliva test. A saliva test showed that she had severe adrenal fatigue. If you don't catch it, it'll go on and it can be fatal. It won't pick up in a blood test until it's basically Addison's disease, which is adrenal failure. Women tend to get it more often. Why? Because women tend to hold their emotions in. Adrenal fatigue will develop 
because of extreme physical or extreme emotional, not trauma, well, trauma too, but just if you're always worried, there's always something going on, fatigue, mental or physical. And that's what will happen. I've had cases subsequent to that and where in every case, they got to the point to where you would not even be able to move. She was not even be, she was not even able to move. You have to help to the restroom. You have to help do everything, all because of something as simple as adrenal fatigue syndrome. And yet, if you look at her now, you wouldn't tell. Why? Because of God's natural remedies. Uh, that is all for the theory part, and I'm sure I'll probably have some questions on that, but remember, um, ladies especially, but men too, but especially women, adrenal fatigue is a very serious, very, very serious deal, and so, uh, and I'll tell you some of the symptoms about it as we go further. Uh, we go to, now to the hands-on. Okay, um, I'm going to step down here, and uh, my wife is going to come and give me a hand to, uh, and the first thing we can do is, the first thing we can do is, I said that, uh, would there be a, a volunteer uh, for their ear? A volunteer for the ear. <laughs> okay, you can come. Uh, is it possible that I could get like a, maybe a, a, a cup, just like a, 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 a throwaway cup, like a, like a little small one so she can drain her ear in it? And, uh, okay, it's probably be better if we give it to you here. Yeah. Are they, t are they locked together? Thank you. Yes, that's good. You can have a seat. Now, essentially, what you're doing, if, if you're doing it at home, like I said, it'll, usually you can, you can just lean over your sink in the bathroom, put your head down, and put two or three drops in. So what we're going to do, though, I'm going to put, now, what you're gonna, when it first goes in, it's going to feel cold. Right? And then you're going to get bubbling. Okay? So I'm not, I'm not going to put as much. I'll put maybe a couple of drops. Normally, if you have a real bad cold or something coming over, it would be like four or five drops, but I'm going to put a couple of drops. Okay? Okay? My heart's cold. <laughs> okay. You're going to head, you're going to head over a little bit more. Lean your head up a little bit more. Put your, put your hand here. <laughs> Feels cold, right? Mm -hmm. Do you feel the bubbling? Hear the bubbling, rather? I feel like I'm drowning. <laughs> <laughs> Still fizzing, correct? Yeah. Right. She said she feels like she's drowning. It's just a <laughs> sensation. <It's laughs> My neck is popping. <laughs> okay, you can, you can. Oh wow! And you can now, now lean your head all the way back and let it all run out. Yeah. And that's what'll happen. It'll run. It'll all run out. And what you, what'll happen is that you, especially if you have a cold or something that's coming on. It's going to fizz and fizz, and if you really have a good infection going, it's going to, like I said, it's going to be warm. It's going to feel hot sometimes, and you want to keep doing it until all the fizz stops. And once the fizz stops, you go to the other ear, 
Uh, and so that was, that was, that's good for uh, uh, codes. No, is this for me? Do you, you want to say something? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. You want to give them, you want to let them know how it feel uh, from, a, from, a, from your perspective? Yes, it feels kind of cold in the beginning, and then you kind of feel this fuzziness going on for a little bit, and then stop. <laughs> Thank you. And you can just, you can just keep, keep your head uh, all, until all of it runs out, and so you know, it'll, it'll all run out eventually. Not that, it don't take that long. Okay, you can go back. Thank you. <laughs> Again, so that's peroxide in the ear. Um, now, um, we'll jump now to the to the herbal stitches. No, we won't do the herbal stitches next. What we'll do is we'll we'll use a remedy for pain that I use in a cancer case. I'm going to use, uh, and in this case here, we would take a. This one? In, in in this case here, we're going to take a a chuck, and what we're going to do is take castor oil. In this particular, in one case, this lady was having, she had late stage cancer, um, and uh, she, it had metastasized to her bone, and she was having se severe pain uh, in her right shoulder. She was unable to sleep, so we were trying to figure out, uh, among some of the other things that we were doing to help with that. So we made a, a poultice, uh, we made a poultice uh, of castor oil, but it's a different type of poultice. So basically, we took castor oil, we take a pan, a saucepan, pour castor oil into it, and heat it slightly. Once it's heated, you take a paper towel and just put it in there, and then you take it out, drain it, Bit of drain out. And as you see, she's cutting the chuck. chuck. You just cut it uh, for the size that you need. Uh, and so basically, we cut it like this. And we place that heated, that heated castor oil inside, like that. That castor oil is going to draw inflammation out of that area. And so basically we take, and then depending on how, how big or small you need it, I'm getting kind of dusty up here. Uh, and so, and so for instance, if this is her, her shoulder, and then we would wrap it around this way. And she was able to sleep through the night uh, without pain. Uh, again, simple, again, take castor oil, take your castor oil, take a saucepan, pour the, the uh, castor oil in, heat it, not hot, hot, but warm enough hot, and then, again, you take a paper towel, a full paper towel, this is the feet, and you dip it in there, let it drain off, and you take a chuck, cut it, slide it inside, put it in, leave it on. Sometimes it may be a person who may have some type of pain here, so you don't need to do that. You can just put it in and just lay it over. And so, um, again, that's one of, the, one of the ways, best ways to help with pain, severe pain, and sometimes cancer cases. Uh, Again, when you have cancer cases, uh, there are different things you can do for pain, uh, but that's one way that we've seen uh, that was very, very effective, not only for cancer pain, it can be used for any type of pain and where inflammation is, is at its basis. Now, uh,
The next thing we want to look at is that remedy on how to regrow flesh. It's comfrey. It's a serum proliferator. This is what actually causes the bone, flesh, and whatnot to regrow, the herb comfrey. So you have comfrey. Then you're going to use the wheat germ oil. And you're going to use the honey. Now, there's a, there's a reason that you use each one. And the reason that you use each one, of course, the comfrey is, is, is to regrow the cells, the flesh, et cetera. The reason for the wheat germ oil initially is, if it's a scar like of a human being, is to reduce scarring. Wheat germ oil is high in vitamin E, so it helps with the scarring. So that's why you put the wheat germ oil. And the honey is for to keep down infection. Honey and sugar. Now, white sugar is not good to eat, but if you throw white sugar into a wound, you can snatch the infection out. Because what happens, the, the, honey, the honey consumes the moisture. The bacteria and whatnot needs the moisture to pro proliferate and grow. Because the honey robs the wound of the moisture, it sets down the capacity for the, uh, for the infection. Uh, I've seen surgeons uh, uh, who talked about that, being able to just you know, use honey. Uh, or even on the battlefield, they've had honey or sugar. They've thrown in wounds to keep infection down. So again, that same concept is here. We're using honey in these wounds uh, to keep back infection. So what we're going to do here, she's going to mix equal parts of honey and wheat germ oil. When you say equal parts, what do you mean equal parts? Equal parts are if you use three tablespoons of honey, you use three tablespoons of the wheat germ oil. So whatever, and you're going to use the amount that you need for the size of the wound or the injury. So if it's a small, you know, it could be a small a three or four inch cut, but it may be deep. So again, so you may only need, say, four tablespoons of each. So she's going to take four tablespoons or, this is open already, right? Yeah. Okay. I just give her a hand here. So what I'll do, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to take uh, one, two, I'm going to take three. I'm going to take three um, of these teaspoons of honey. And uh, maybe you can just punch it through the top. Yeah. And so we're going to be three teaspoons of that, and we're going to take three teaspoons of the wheat germ oil. So that's equal parts of each of each of those. One, two, three. So we have three of each. So now. What's left is the, this, this is not it. Uh, attention to detail, right? <laughs> when I was in the Marine Corps, they preach attention to detail. Attention to detail. Attention to, because think about it. I almost put slippery, slippery am. <laughs> slippery am as opposed to, now if I would have, we've been wondering what's, why is it not working, right? And so here's, here's uh, it's comfrey root powder. Uh, and again, Slippery M works, but not for this. For any gut issue that you're having, Slippery M. So how much of this do you want to add? You want to add the amount, you want to get it gummy, almost like a paste, almost like peanut butter. Because when you put it on, let me get it here. So you put it in, and you just mix it in. Mix. Now, sometimes you may run into the, the issue where you say, okay, I put a little bit too much 
uh, of the herb in. I put a little bit too much of, the, uh, uh, of one or the other in. Sometimes you may have to kind of balance it off. But the idea is to try to get it about the consistency of a paste or peanut butter. So here, let me get a, get a little bit more. So right now, it's like pudding. That's, that's a little bit too, that's, you don't want it in that consistency. You want it more like a paste. So, OK. And the, the reason is because when you're putting it on the wound, what's going to happen is the wound is going to suck in the, um, the comfrey because it's going to be rebuilding, it's going to be re, uh, uh, producing cells. And so instead of you taking it off, you're not going to take it off. You're going to, uh, you're going to just add more to the, uh, to the mixture. So a little bit more. Yeah. So right now it's still looking, it's like now it still look like pudding. We don't want that. That's, that's, that's a little bit, you see how it's dripping? We want it stiffer than that. We want it like a paste. So. Okay, it's looking about like what we want it. It's more, more like this now. It's more, more about this is closer to how we want it. So I stick into the spoon. It could be a little stiffer, but this is this is okay. So then, what's going to happen? I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it there. And then I will have a I will have a gauze. I have gauze here, but I have a gauze. Just make if this was gauze. I'm going to put the gauze over it lightly. I'm going to put the gauze over it lightly, and then lightly tape it. And so what's going to happen? The next day I'm going to check it, and what's what you've seen happen is that less of it is there. And so just add a little more to the top. Put the gauze back on. Same thing the next day, same thing the next day. And what we found also is uh, normally the soreness that you would have, that normally after you cut your hand or something like that, uh, because of the white, the white blood cells that go through the area, it's not there the next day. She cut her foot once at the, uh, uh, the, top of the bottom of the refrigerator. She cut the top of her foot. And uh, she was like, hey, Keith, I, I, cut, I hurt my foot. I was like, what's going on? So, I said, uh, she says, you, could, you know, it's bleeding. I said, okay, I'm coming. I said, throw some cayenne in it. <laughs> the, the, the cayenne stopped the bleeding, right? So she threw the cayenne in it, but it burns. It burns. <laughs> and so, and so uh, but we use the same remedy on it. And the next day, there was, normally there would be soreness, because when you get a cut like that, there was no soreness. And in two or three days, it was, it was good to go. Less than a week, so we've used it several times. Uh, it is it is a uh, it is a good remedy. So again, how much do you use? You're going to take equal parts of wheat germ oil and honey, and the amount of the uh, uh, of the comfrey that you use is going to be based upon the size of, you know, the wound and then and the consistency that you want it. Now, this. Now the two, painkillers, white willow bark, and Jamaican dogwood. Most of you said you hadn't heard of Jamaican dogwood, right? This is Jamaican dogwood. And I like to get, I like to get the herbs that, that are not alcohol based. Uh, uh, sometimes you, you can, I mean, there are times that you can dilute the alcohol out, but I, I like getting it, getting it without it if I can. So basically, this Jamaican dogwood. Right. 
So you're making dogwood. You're going to, for severe, severe pain, you're going to take an entire dropper full in warm water. And it's about three or four ounces of warm water. So they have some new top now. So can you see that? Jamaican dogwood. Um, and again, to make it even more effective, you can take the white willow bark, a full, a full dropper full of Jamaican dogwood, and either half or full also of white willow bark. You really don't need the white willow bark if you have that much, but if you want to make it even more effective, but almost for any pain that you're having, these two, Jamaican dogwood, the extract, uh, white willow bark extract, these two right here. And again, it's just a matter of taking a cup, you know, put warm water, about this much, three to four, maybe three to four ounces, about here, and you put, you know, drop it full of that, and or drop it full of this, or both, put them in there, stir it, and drink it down. And you should normally feel relief of your pain in about 20 minutes. Um, what do I have next? Now, who, who's, who are you, for, are you guys familiar with using the nebulizer? Yeah. Some people, yes, yeah, some people, no. no. Yeah. Now, the, the nebulizer is very important. Like I said before, when we were talking about um, with the uh, hydrogen peroxide in the ears, well, when you use a nebulizer with hydrogen peroxide, you're going to get similar benefits. Uh, now, there's three things that we're going to look at. What does the nebulizer do? The nebulizer basically causes, it takes, it, it takes say, hydrogen peroxide, and it takes it from basically from its liquid state and make it, makes it aerosolized. Uh, so that it can go, you can breathe it right into your lungs, for instance, into your, also into your, 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 your sinuses, or the whole, the whole uh, respiratory tract. And so basically, what you do, you can buy, you can buy one, you can buy one of these, uh, Amazon. Uh, this one runs about 70 bucks. They got some that's not, not quite as expensive. But I want to get a little bit more because this is going to typically last longer. You know, they say you get what you pay for, right? So... Uh, and, you know, your health, you know, like when my wife was sick, it took, we, it took a lot because it took, when you have adrenal fatigue, it's not going to go away in a month. It's going to take three months just to get back functioning. And it's going to take six to ten months really to get, you know. And so, and, and it, some of it, so we spent thousands. But guess what? She's worth it. Amen. So, if you have, how much is your health worth? Priceless. So here you have, again, there's different ones, and uh, uh, so basically, this is this is the uh, if you take it apart, there's. This is where you're going to put the liquid or the fluid that you're going to be using. In this case, we're going to be using, we'll look at uh, three. You look at here, you're using regular hydrogen peroxide, food grade hydrogen peroxide, and colloidal silver, which is considered a natural antibiotic. You familiar with colloidal silver? Yes? So basically, in this particular, in this, this particular one, uh, let me slide this to the side. You basically take the, you take the top off, and you pour in 
maybe two or three milliliters of what it is you're going to use. Then you're going to, you know, and all of them may act, be function a little different, but they're basically the same. They're not that, they're not that uh, uh, hard to figure out. And so basically you, you, you have your liquid in here, and then what you're going to do, you're going to, can you hold that? You will have this tube here where you're going to hook to the nebulizer here. And then th this end, you're going to hook to the area where you have your liquid going. So again, this is hooked here, here. Again, remember, this is where you have, you pour your liquid in. And then you'll have, they'll, you'll have, they'll come with one for your mouth, where you just put it in, just put it in here. But I recommend that you use this. And basically, you just put this here on the end. Yep, that's it. And you're going to and then you hit and then you hit start. And you just breathe it. And okay, how long would you breathe it? If you're going if you're going to be going for Preventative measures. It's a good idea to do it every day. Most people who do these treatments every day just for preventative, they may do it five minutes twice a day. And they swear by it. over time, they just feel better, they breathe better, they have better health. If you are sick or trying to fight off of a cold or something like that, you can do, if, if, I, was, if I was in the beginning stages of something and I could feel my body trying to fight it off, I would say do 15 minutes every hour for the first five or six hours. Uh, and so, now some people are concerned with, because if you buy the direct, this is, this is good enough to do it, the regular 79 cent, but some people, because this has stabilizers in it, uh, some people say, well, I don't want the stabilizers, they recommend the food grade hydroperoxide, which is more expensive, uh, but what will work also as well for your, inter your internal, uh, terrain also is colloidal silver that can be done the same way. Colloidal silver, a natural antibody. Is it? Okay. I wanted to say before closing out with this segment is um, This is something that I recommend, if you can, that you keep on hand. This is Lipo Nano C. It's not, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. But uh, it's vitamin C, right? Liposomal vitamin C. But if you can't get that, then use regular vitamin C. It's, it's going to work. Oh, it's going to work as long as you take amount, the, the right amounts. But uh, in the salute, in the what I told you earlier that we created for uh, for the thing that everybody was afraid of, this was the one that we recommend. Reason being because the way that it's made, when you take it, it goes into your body as though you were taking a uh, an IV. It goes inside of the cells. Regular vitamin C normally goes, the, most of it goes inside, into the bloodstream. This goes into the cells as well. And so uh, it's, like taking, it's like taking an IV, but you're taking it orally. And so it's not cheap. But uh, again, if you can, uh, it could, in some cases, it can be, it can be, it can be the det determiner. It's also what we use in adrenal fatigue, too. Uh, uh, 
So, if we get you, we do questions and answers now. Uh, this is this is lipo C, liposomal vitamin C, and they have other liposomal. Uh, it's the way that, uh, 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 supplements, but C is one of the uh, ones that we have uh, that we always use and that works really well uh, for us. L i p o s l i p o s a. L i p o n e m o c. But that's that's the shortening of it. L i p o s o m a l. I think it is. And this is just the, this is the brand that we use. There are other brands on the market, but this is the one that we we like a lot. What's the brand? This brand is D Dr. Lamb, Dr. L A M. L A M. He has a website that they can go to. Yeah. Okay. Take care of that. No oh. Oh. Okay. It's time for questions. Are there any? Any any questions? Any questions? Okay, I see quite a few. We'll start. We'll start with with, with you, ma'am. I think uh, he's coming with the mic. Uh, yes, I see the coconut oil, and that's one of the things that I was um, pretty much have a question on because I seen everything else being introduced. All right, and the coconut oil. What we want to talk about with the coconut oil is with, we talked a little bit about oil pulling. And oil pulling, co combining coconut oil with, say, uh, thieves' oil. Again, so you take, a, you take a, a, a teaspoon, say, of coconut oil. And remember what we said before with the oil pulling? And oil pulling should be done probably, depending on what you're doing it for, uh, once a day, and then some people can cut back to three, t three times a week, uh, depending on what you're looking for. Some people do it for gum issues. Some people do it for other health issues, for detox issues. It's a, it's a way to do a light detox by oil pulling. And so coconut oil, uh, one, of the, one of the best, one of the best um, uh, things to use it for is for oil pulling. Coconut oil is also very, very good for, to help prevent uh, there's some evidence that it helps prevent the likelihood that you would develop Alzheimer's by taking a tablespoon a day. Now, that doesn't mean that we can eat what we want and take coconut oil and say, I'm not going to get Alzheimer's. Or not, you know, we, just, we still have to f follow the, the, you know, but it helps. There's research that shows that people who have, uh, who are beginning to see early signs of Alzheimer's or dementia, that coconut oil can actually help. And again, and then, but that's by taking it internally. It also helps with the gut. Uh, so, but we had it here for oil pulling purposes. So again, for oil pulling, you take a, ta a tablespoon or a teaspoon, a heaping teaspoon, swish it around in your mouth for how long? 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. 15 to 20 minutes, but it's only 20 minutes. And then spit it, don't spit it down the toilet. Yeah, spit it in the garbage because that, you do it every day, it'll back up your, your, your pipes. So spit it in a, in a, in a sandwich bag and, or spit it directly in the trash can, but don't spit it into your, into your, directly into your toilet. Uh, Hi. Um, thank you, first of all, so much for everything. This has been such an amazing wealth of information. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the adrenal fatigue and what is the remedy for that? All right. Adrenal fatigue. Uh, the remedy for adrenal fatigue is, is what the, the name applies is that the person is fatigued. And they're fatigued, their body is basically starting to break down because of fatigue, either mentally and or spiritually. I'm not I'm sorry, physically. Uh, spiritually too because there's all, we're all tied in. So what ends up happening is there are dietary changes that have to be made in many cases. In terms of supplementation, uh, they have to take vitamin C uh, because they're going to be a, it's going to be an issue with cortisol. Uh, they have to take uh, glutathione, which is the master hormone. Uh, 
they have to take certain amounts of magnesium. Uh, and again, this is just a quick summary. Uh, because what happens with it is that it's, a, it's called, it's a syndrome because what happens, you have so many symptoms with it to where it's hard. If you go to the doctor, they think it's this and they think it's that. And if they don't ch check for adrenal fatigue, they'll never get it. They'll, you know, they'll have you taken on drugs and everything else when everyone overlooked adrenal fatigue. But some of the symptoms is that you're, you'll be always tired. Uh, sometimes early on, uh, women will have uh, uh, irregular menstrual cycles. Uh, those are like some of the early signs. Uh, as, as, it, as it progresses, you have, uh, that you have inability to concentrate, brain fog, uh, uh, inability to sleep, and normally you will wake up, you'll, be, you'll wake up every night around the same, every morning around the same time at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and women and men who have it, they'll wake up, and they're like, they'll wake up at 2 in the morning, between 2 and 4, and they can't go back to sleep. And they're like, they're wide awake. And the reason being is because their cortisol level, what happens is your adrenal glands sit on top of the kidney, these two glands. And the, the adrenal glands are like, are, like, are like shock absorbers. You know, if you have a nice car, when you hit a bump, the shock absorbers, you know, take the hit off. But if you have like one of those old cars, you feel every bump, right? So what ends up happening is when the adrenals, when you stress out a lot, emotional or physical stress, you can burn out your adrenal glands with your B-complex vitamins. Once you burn out the adrenal glands, uh, your, your levels of cortisol will go down. Uh, your body will keep producing cortisol, cortisol, cortisol to try to help you deal with it. So what ends up happening, the cortisol levels will get so low uh, to where you are not able to deal with stress and your B-complex vitamins as well. So it, what happens at night, one of the reasons people will wake up is because about 2 in the morning is when your uh, adrenaline is the highest. And God has made it in such a way that when you have enough cortisol, the cortisol checks that adrenaline so you stay asleep. When you're low, you wake up and you can't go back to sleep because the body's going through the regular processes. So what ends up happening is a cascade of symptoms begin to happen now because not only are your B-complex vitamins uh, out of whack, your other hormones are out of whack. So all of these hormones are out of whack and then the symptoms begin to set in. Uh, and, to, and it'll get so far gone. And you can ask my wife. It was, it was so bad to where after a while, she couldn't even do her hair. She couldn't hold her arms up to do her hair. Uh, couldn't walk because she's just so, just so tired. Just, just didn't have any energy. Just, and I've had other cases the same. Other cases the same where, you know, they just, and a lot of times, you know, we live now and we keep pushing the button and we keep pushing. I'm, I'm guilty of it myself. I keep pushing and pushing and I need, you need to rest. And some, for some time my wife tells me, Keith, you need to, you know, you, you're going to, you know, Say, I know, but I got to get this done. I got to get that done. The body is very unforgiving. The body functions on laws. And we have to cooperate with those laws. Uh, and men get it too. It's just that women get it more frequently because, again, uh, and again, those are some of the things that, 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 are, that are needed. Usually there's some, some, you have to look at the liver as well because the liver plays a role in regulating hormones. So a lot of times there's milk thistle. Uh, dandelion root and some other things, but the hormones are very important. Glutathione is there, vitamin C is there, and one of the reasons we use vitamin C, this is the one that we use, is because vitamin C is one of the chief, is one of the raw, main raw components that the body uses to make cortisol. And so um, those are just, I can't think of everything off the top of my head because there's a lot of things that, 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 that we add. It was, how many things were you on? About 10, 10 different things. Uh, vitamin C, cortisol, this, I mean, not cortisol, but things to reduce cortisol. So, yeah. Uh, and also, anytime you have adrenal fatigue, anytime you have anything dealing with your adrenals, your thyroid is going to automatically be affected. So, uh, next, I think. Okay. Earlier you mentioned coconut oil. Is it refined or unrefined in this case? In this case, Superfood, organic, extra virgin, cold pressed, unrefined. Thank you. Okay, you had mentioned the herbal salve for your skin. Can mm -hmm. you can you um, make that in advance and have it prepared in case you have yes. it for emergency? You can. You can. How mm -hmm. would you? How long would it be? 
able to last? You could, it will probably last maybe six months if you made it in advance. And you yeah. would put it because in the, the honey acts as a preservative. Mm -hmm. uh, the honey acts as a preservative. So about maybe six months. And you really don't have to refrigerate it. Mm -hmm. uh, Chef life in six months. Yeah, I would say six months. I would say it's about six months. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah. Quick question. Uh, for those individuals who may be dealing with like high blood pressure or any type of heart issues that are already on medication and they start using any of these herbs, it, can it counteract or interact with anything that could will bring about any other kind of issues that would cause them to, to decline? Yes, that's a good, good question. One of the things about if you're already on any medication, uh, it's, it's, if it's good to work with a, a medical missionary or a naturopath or, or someone who will uh, be able to sit down and uh, uh, see what you're on and test whatever they're recommending against any contraindications. Uh, because that's one thing you have to, you're supposed to do. If you get someone who's on a, they're on a drug already, and before you recommend something to them, uh, one thing I do is I say, okay, give me a list of all your drug and your medications. So if I'm looking at recommending you go on a, say, Hawthorne Berry, I have to make sure that there are no contraindications with the Hawthorne Berry. Uh, because some herbs can actually can cause whatever you're taking to be ineffective or vice versa. Or sometimes they can clash. So yes, uh, just, you have to, always be, have to always check just to be sure. Sometimes there's no contraindication. Sometimes there could be. Yeah. Hi, thank Hi. you so much. Uh, so this one is for my mom. She has a lot of issues with sciatic nerve pain. So I was wondering if the castor oil that you mentioned earlier, if that would help with, you know, her pain. And also for myself, um, I recently had a surgery and um, on a lot of pain medication. And I was wondering, um, uh, I think you mentioned the Jamaican. Dogwood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If um, that would help with relieve some of my pain. And also another issue with the pain medication is that it causes a lot of constipation. Right. Yeah. With, with, the, with your first, with your sciatic nerve, with your mom, I think probably, uh, and sciatica, sciatica is one of the, the, the hardest things to deal with for a lot of people. It's very painful. Yeah. Uh, but um, sometimes with that, you have to find out what's the, what's the cause behind it. Because uh, sometimes sciatic nerve uh, pain is caused by different reasons, and so it's kind of hard to say. Uh, but for I would say I would say Jamaican dogwood for her would help with that with that as well. Now with you, uh, because you're already on pain medication, uh, but before taking anything else, uh, like if you wanted to take Jamaican dogwood, no doubt it could help. But because you're already on something, you might not you might want to check and see. Okay, again. You don't want to take that, and then there's a, some contraindication between the two, right? So you might want to stop, uh, basically check and make sure, say, okay, I'm going to take the Jamaican dogwood, but find out if there's a, with what I'm taking, is this going to be a problem? Because you don't want to take something and hurt yourself. Uh, and what was the, la the last part? Uh, oh, constipation. Yeah, that's a problem with medications, uh, some medications. Uh, and... And again, you know, uh, so it's not because I don't know. The, one of the best things to do with that for constipation is probably prune juice. <laughs> again, thank you so much for the valuable information. Oh, okay. Um, what about sinus infections? Any um, natural remedies for sinus infections? I keep getting them over and over again, no matter the time of the year. All right. Do you eat any dairy at all? I have since stopped eating since dairy stopped? products for like the last maybe month or so, but mm -hmm. this is a problem that's been occurring over and over for the past couple of years. One of the things we see uh, in people who have recurrent and so with, is uh, the issue with dairy. Uh, uh, there are some things to, to help with that. Now, there's, there's even some, there are even some, some um, uh, physical things you can do. But basically, sinusitis, um, 
is in inflammation, of course. Anytime you hear the itis on the end. And so basically, one, the first step, you've done the first step, is now is to, is to uh, you eliminate the dairy. Uh, also, following up with that, probably with a, with a good body cleanse. Uh, uh, and I always recommend cleaning the, the colon, then the liver, and the kidney, and the blood. Uh, and so, uh, uh, and then of course, eating what they call, we call it, you know, a full plant-based diet. Uh, and of course, getting fresh air and sunshine. Uh, and, and basically, since you've eliminated, especially the dairy, and, and once you, you know, do those things, you should, you should see those, those, those sinus infections start to go away. Hello. I just want to thank you for the valuable information that you've given us this evening. Right here. Okay, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you a question about the liposomal C. Um, um, what, is the long, what is the shelf life on that? Like, how long does that last? If you buy a bottle about that size or whatever. Uh, this is, it probably lasts two or three years. I think I've kept it for two or three years. All right, that's pretty good. Yeah. I also wanted to know about the honey. Uh, does it matter if you use filtered or raw honey? Raw honey is better. Raw honey is better. Yeah. Okay, and the last one with the peroxide in the ear, um, would you rinse it out with water after the peroxide or? Just leave the peroxide and just rinse it out. Yeah, just, just let it drain out. You don't have just to rinse it out. Just let it drain out. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi. One second. Hey, how you doing? Okay, how you doing? I wanted to ask you about collodial gold versus collodial silver. And also, as far as taking certain herbs, do you take the capsule form or the powder form? All right, thank you. Good question. Now, <clears throat> with regard to collodial gold, I'm not up on that yet. You know, I won't stand here and pretend that I know everything because I don't. So I'm not up on collodial gold yet. Uh, so I can't really give you my opinion on that yet as compared to collodial silver. And I think we should uh, make sure, uh, this is just my, I think uh, it would be wise for me to, to try to, to speak something that I don't really know about. It's better for me to find out about it first. Uh, with respect to, is it better to take uh, powder you said powder or uh, or in the capsule. Sometimes they have like sometimes they have like capsules. Right, and sometimes it's or, and just the natural herb itself, like it'll be like bark or right or capsules. It it actually sometimes depends on what you're using it for. Like for instance, um, if you're making the root or the bark, the bark and when the leaves. See if you're making a tea out of it. Uh, usually the bark and the leaves are better than make it than the, than, the, than the powder. Then there's some herbs that are so bitter that it's kind of better to capsule them. So really, as long as the as long as the um, the herb is you know is, is wild crafted, if you can get it wild crafted or organic, uh, and so it's better, basically depending on what you're using it for. Um, now I will say that if you're taking, uh, let's say you're taking um, uh, the liquid, because that's also some questions I get sometimes too, the liquid. Uh, is typically going to, of course, going to get into the body faster. The extracts, the extracts are going to be stronger, and the tinctures are going to be stronger than the powders in general. The teas are only going to be the, the weakest uh, uh, in terms of intensity. But yeah, it just it depends on what you're using it for in general. Thank you. Um, is it on? If you would have a med medical bag at home, could you give us a list of the things that we would need uh, so we could be uh, you know, ready to do whatever has to be done if there's an emergency? Yes. Um, I, would have, I would have, of course, cayenne pepper, 90,000 heat units or hotter. I would have uh, lobelia. I would have activated charcoal. I would have... Uh, 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 Thieves oil, I would have uh, maybe lavender. Uh, I would, of course, I would have gauzes and band-aids. Uh, uh, I 
off the top of my head. There's, there's some other things I would have too, but those are some of the things I would have, some of the things I would have off the top of my head. Uh, anything uh, that would be that would be uh, that I could have, just first and foremost, that was that would be readily available in the case of emergency where I need to save my life, right? <clears throat> and so, like if I'm bitten by a snake or something like that. Okay, if I got my aggravated charcoal or this, again, aggravated charcoal is good for snake bites as well. Uh, but the way you use it is you need to change it, like with the spider bite, you need to change that poultice like every 10 minutes at first, every 10 minutes. And you need to also drink it. Uh, make it, make, make uh, charcoal uh, slurry and drink it and change the poultice every 10 minutes. Uh, usually, uh, again, so if I had that, a bag like that, that's something I would have. I would first say, okay, what things do I need to save my life? And then, uh, and then, and then go down the list from there. Again, it's hard to think everything off the top of my head right now, but those are some of the things that I would have. Uh, yes. Uh, Doc, yes. three more questions. If they have questions afterwards, they can see you. Thank you. But well, three more. All right. Thank you. Just three more. Three Thanks. more. Three more. Yes. Thank you. Um, I noticed that you gave two, actually, um, you gave two um, demonstrations for breathing issues. You have the first one is for robilia and cayenne pepper, and the other one was for the nebulizer. I was just asking if there are criteria for using each or one or the other. Uh, for the, the nebulizer, um, it's more so like, let's say for instance, if you're, if you're coming down with, uh, um, let's say you're asthmatic, right? Normally asthmatics, instead of using the face mask, they would use the, the mouthpiece. And so if they, say if they have something going, coming on, but normally asthmatics would have, they would have drugs or whatnot for that. But if I was going to have, if I was starting to come down with a cold, or if I was, had a cold and I was having breathing issues, uh, or the flu, I would, do, I would use uh, the nebulizer as we set up here, as we started up here, and I would use it with the hydrogen peroxide, uh, and I would use it probably 15 minutes at a time, three times a day, and what, what I should see is I should see this mucus and whatnot coming out, and my breathing should be improved, greatly improved. Now with the, with the lobelia, uh, you're gonna, it's the same thing. It, it's, it's, it's for people who are having, who same thing, have asthma issues. Even lobelia works very well for those who have asthma issues who may have problems breathing. Like the, young, the older gentleman I was telling you about before, he was having pretty much asthma issues. And so, the, the, so that's why we used the lobelia for him. He couldn't, he was having problems getting any type of a breath. Now, let me add this to that. In that outline that I mentioned that everyone was afraid about, uh, I had high amounts of melatonin. And the reason there are high amounts of melatonin, most people who were dying were dying because pneumonia was setting in, they weren't able to breathe. Melatonin was in there to prevent that from happening. So I just wanted to add that on the end is that melatonin itself is very, very effective uh, in eradicating breathing issues as well. I just wanted to throw that in. Most people associate uh, melatonin with sleep, what it is, but in that program, it's to protect the lungs. Uh, and so I just wanted to throw that in. But yes, for lobelia, it's for people who are having breathing issues, who have asthma issues, any type of breathing issues. Uh, you can follow up with Huh? Uh, I would think it's two different things. Well, you could, you could if you had it, but I think the, the nebulizer will, will uh, can, it, it, it serves a little bit different function, but you could forego it if you, it works, yes. If it works, you can forego it. Is there is one more, one yes. or two more, one more? Yes, sir, mm -hmm. um, oh. thanks for the information, but um, I know you, sp you spoke on the, the wound and what mm -hmm. to mix to get the flesh to grow back. Mm -hmm. I have a thumb right here that I almost love um, by a mitre saw, mm -hmm. and it almost took it all off to the bone it was. But um, it's ill, it was stitched back, but it doesn't have any feeling, it's numb, in other words. Oh, um, oh, oh, what is the, the 
the potent that could get um, the feeling back in the in the in the in a thumb, something that went numb. I don't know that there is one. Uh, it sounds like you, you, did you sound like you the tendon was probably cut and everything. Yes. The tendon is still there. When the tendon said, is the still there? Is there, but just doesn't have any feeling. Yes, but another person was telling me about the same comfrey mm -hmm. with something else, but um, I didn't get all the details. Right. Because he has a wife that meet in an accident and the hand was numb and the comfrey and, and the com some other thing right. brought it back. It's possible because comfrey is a, it regrows, maybe because of it, it, the feeling is the nerve, so the nerve is damaged. Yeah. Right? And so it wouldn't hurt to try. I can't say that it'll work because I don't know. I haven't had a case in point like that, but I, it would, I would try it if I were you. Last one? Yeah. Oh. Hi. Will the comfrey wheat germ and honey um, cure skin cancer? If not, do you have a remedy for that? Uh, I don't think it will. It, it's not a specific to cure skin cancer because cancer is in the, is, is in the blood. So normally when you, you know, like when, you, when someone says oh, they have breast cancer, they have skin cancer, they have this, uh, you basically treat cancer of any part of the body uh, on the basis of a cancer program. So these, like for this, they're not, they're not really specific for like skin cancers and things of that nature. But in dealing with skin cancer, you would approach it in a, with a whole cancer program. And once you're dealing with the underlying cause, that issues will go away. Uh, so you have to have medical. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, unless you're going through like a natural way. That's yes. what I'm looking for. Is there a yeah. natural way to? Yeah, you, yeah, there, yeah you, it would be a whole protocol. Okay. They, they would like normally. Normally, a natural person would sit down with you or whoever it is, and they would say, okay, they would look at your records, look at your whatever or whoever it is records, they would go over and, and sit down and go through a whole program and say, okay, we're going to create a protocol uh, for your particular case because each person is different, and then this protocol is going to follow this protocol, and normally what they'll say, okay, uh, as you, you, you follow the person and see how, what progress is being made, Sometimes you tweak the protocol, sometimes you add certain things, sometimes you take away, sometimes you increase, sometimes you, as, you, as you look at the person, how the body responds. So basically, uh, that's what most natural practitioners are going to do. They're going to sit you down specifically, say, okay, this is what you have, look at your history, everything, uh, and then create a protocol specifically to see if they can develop uh, a program to help reverse that cancer. That's what most practitioners are going to do. I think that's, that's it. No. Oh. Hi. Hi. Um, what would you recommend for epilepsy and diabetes and all their symptoms together? <laughs> well, that's tough. Yeah. Uh, diabetes, is, diabetes is, I deal with that one first. Di diabetes is chiefly a diet disease. Uh, diabetes is chief, chiefly, 90, probably almost 100% of the time, diabetes can be reversed by diet. Type 2 diabetes we're talking about, not type 1, type 2. So type 2 diabetes almost always can be reversed by diet. Sometimes you, you, you have to add or you can add in some, some herbs to help the body, you know, come back. Uh, but normally when you start making those dietary changes, uh, also, and including exercise, uh, diet and exercise, those two, in most cases, can, can render type 2 diabetes ineffective. Uh, when I say ineffective, it's not a good word to use, but render it, you know, not harmful, get rid of it. And now with, with epilepsy, that's a whole different program. Not that it can't be done, but... Um, it has to be addressed on a whole different pro, a, a protocol. No, we found sometimes when you correct dietary issues, sometimes epilepsy goes away. Not always, but sometimes. Uh, and so, but yes, epilepsy, there's certain herbs and what things that you can do with protocols that can actually help reverse epilepsy as well. I had a case of that uh, uh, last year. Had a young lady, she was, she was having, she just started having seizures uh, in her, her late, when she's in her early 30s. 
took us a few months. She was on the medication, but the seizures were reduced, but they weren't going away. And so uh, we finally got on the program, and probably about three months, or three or four months, she stopped having them. And so, but that's, that's the whole, yeah, that's because it's, it's kind of complex, but yes. All right. Okay, uh, Dr. Henry, there is a person here who would like to give a testimony of deliverance from one of the infirmities that you mentioned earlier. And she does have the mic. This is Marcia. Good evening. I've known Dr. Henry, Keith, and Donna. For almost, I've known them for almost 20 years. And um, I have had severe hormonal imbalance for many years. And Keith developed a protocol for me that got me started on the road to recovery there. I was also a patient of his for adrenal fatigue after uh, Donna and a couple other good friends of ours. It, it just hit us all in a circle, it seemed. And his protocol helped me also to overcome that. I've leaned on him and Donna for many things through the years. And I'm a living testimony, a walking testimony that everything he's telling you is not just biblically sound, but works. Because it's biblically sound, it works. Amen. I just wanted to share Amen. that. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Oh. So I, in, in closing, I just remi remember that God reminded his people in the Bible, he says, it is I that healeth thee. So remember, it is God that heals. We may use herbs, we may use techniques to herbs, but God infuses uh, these herbs and these, 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 these healing things, these healing um, modalities is infused with his wisdom or with his healing power. And so like when we see in the Bible where Jesus would put, them, he said, you know, he would put mud and said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. It wasn't the mud, it was the healing power of God. So again, uh, I've seen some great uh, healing stories since God has allowed me to do this. But I do realize it's not because of my wisdom, it's not because of my uh, tenacity, it's not because of how smart I am, it's because God heals. Thank you again for listening to me and for coming out and giving your time, and may God bless and keep you. Well, we want to thank Dr. Henry once again and his wife for traveling and for sharing this pertinent information with us. And I really hope and pray that you all will take it to heart and that you all will try some of these simple, practical remedies in your own homes and share them with others. Okay, so we have a special announcement. We did say on the flyer that we are giving away groceries. So there's a bag of groceries that you will receive as you exit the building. Okay, so there's a bag for everyone. We also, I believe you all got a green bag when you came in for our first time visitors. If you didn't, you can also ask one of our uh, team members about the green bags if you did not get one as well. I did enjoy this health and wellness seminar. How about you? Will you invite someone else to the next one? Did you leave with us your textable phone number so we can notify you? Did you? Did you turn in your cards? I could see one holding her card. Did you all return and turn in your cards? Please, please, so that we have the team members coming around to collect those cards, just in case you forget. We want to make sure that we all retrieve those. So friends, again, we want to thank you for making the sacrifice and coming out this afternoon. At this time, bow your heads with me as we spend a few moments in prayer. Father in heaven, 
We're thankful for your many blessings and for what you have bestowed upon each one of us. Those of us who were local here and also Safe to Serve International joining us online and the first time viewers. We can truly say the Lord was in this place. He manifested his healing work. And I pray even now as we have received these blessings, that we will make it a point of duty to surrender all to you, that we will not just be healthy sinners, but be converted people made in the image of Jesus Christ. So I pray even now that as you make this appeal to each one of us, that we will publicly acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. So my friends, ladies and gentlemen, do you today say, Lord, heal me physically, mentally, and spiritually? If these are your sentiments, while your heads are bowed, eyes are closed, could you kindly raise your hand? Hands down. Father, thank you as we leave this place. Take us to our places of destination safely. Bring us back at the next meeting by your grace. And may we invite others to join us here for another spiritual awakening, another session that we can receive physical and mental healing. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you for answering. Thank you for salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.